I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Harvey Oberfeld, a retired but still issue-engaged television reporter. You've probably seen his blog, Keeping It Real, on his website, HarveyOberfeld.ca. Welcome back to the show, Harvey. Good to be on. Very interesting blog about how Canada should maybe retool its immigration policy. And we have to tell people right off the top, Harvey, this is not a racist document in any way. You're just trying to do what you think is best for the country. Right. You know, I I think about I travel, uh, you know, I've traveled in Europe and I've been in Asia. And uh, I'm aware of, uh, you know, the number of Asians that have come into the country. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, immigrants are good for Canada. Immigrants really help. They 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 do more than just buy homes. You know, people say, "Oh, they're buying all these condos." No, no, no. I'm talking about real immigrants who come here to contribute to the economy, to contribute to our culture, to uh, you know. Con- I mean, they they buy things. They uh, they do good work. Most of them are fine, fine citizens. So uh, I see no problem with immigration, and our demographic uh, growth uh, needs them because uh, Lord knows with the boomers and the you know the people. Uh, uh, getting older and that and retiring we need a workforce and our birth rate isn't keeping up with the need so i'm open to immigration but i did notice that canada is placing a huge emphasis on immigration from asia now they had to do that uh you know back in this uh, starting i guess about the 60s or the 70s there wasn't that interest in coming here from europe and that because europe was doing quite well economically uh, and they didn't need jobs here. They weren't thinking of what's going on here. And Canada started to open up, uh, you know, uh, to Asian, Asian immigrants and maybe rewrite some of the wrongs we'd had in the past where we kept them out anyway, you know. So I have no objection to having people come here from Asia. But circumstances have changed in Europe and circumstances have changed in the United States and circumstances are changing uh, in the UK. So what we're not doing from anything I've seen when I've been over there or watching the government statements or where they visit and where they ask people to come here, we're not taking advantage of the possibilities of having a renewed immigration spurt from the UK, from the EU, from the United States. And I think the government's missing missing the boat, if I can put it that way, on that topic. Well, I know several people in the government would be afraid that if they change the policy now, they'd be accused of being racist. How do you prevent that? Well, I think what you do is you don't say, well, we want Europeans instead of Asians. No, you don't do that. We just say we want immigrants from, uh, you know, wherever they're from, as long as they meet certain criteria. And uh, it seems to me in in getting the uh, Asians uh, that we've had in the last uh, 20, 30 years, the criteria has been either you have a lot of money and you can come here and uh, buy your way in, you know, through an, uh, an entrepreneurial visit, or you have relatives here that you're going to join, or you're an immigrant who's fleeing some sort of strife and everything like that. Nothing wrong with any of those. I, you know, welcome them all. But we also have opportunities to look overseas that didn't exist before you know the social uh, the, the society in europe is not what it used to be i'll bet you there are a lot of educated skilled europeans who would be very happy to come to canada if they were given any show of interest they, you know we do have some that come but very few because the government isn't doing anything to invite them so i'm not saying don't bring these people in from asia that have those skills but why don't we seek out people uh, who have number one well educated, number two have skills, number three looking for new opportunities, and number four trying to get away from uh, the changing societies where they are, whether that's Britain, whether it's Europe, whether it's the United States. And these people, 
in fact, they would easy, more easily assimilate than the people that have come here from the Philippines or China or India because the people from Europe and the UK and the US, they speak English or they speak French. They are culturally uh, closer to our uh, traditional heritage. Uh, they politically are closer to our traditional heritage. They would make ideal immigrants. Uh, Lord knows we settled this country with people from those areas. Now, it fell off after the 50s and the 60s and the 70s because economically they had the things so well over there they didn't need us. But I bet you now if we showed any interest in them, they would show an interest in us. Harvey, do you have any recent immigration numbers for us to look at? Where are people coming from? Well, that's what got me onto this. Uh, you know, uh, John McCallum, the immigration minister, I saw this article uh, in, in in a very good article in the Asian Post. I read the Asian Post, and uh, and and believe it or not, it's actually quite a good magazine, a good newspaper. So I read it. Now there was a story there of John McCallum speaking in China, speaking in the Philippines, saying uh, and uh, sort of imploring people, that inviting people, we need more people to come here from Asia, and. Uh, uh, saying that we were Canada is even going to speed up the process. It now takes two years to go through the immigration process. He wants to speed it up to th th uh, six months, and he also wants to increase the numbers. So but they didn't say what the numbers were. So I thought I better check that out. <clears throat> so I looked it up. In 2015, we had the largest number of immigrants to Canada came from the Philippines, not China. Philippines, 50,000. India, 34,000. China, 20,000, and Iran, uh, 11,600, and uh, and then Pakistan is next. So I looked at that, and I thought, well, what about the United States, Europe? So I looked those figures up. And by the way, those figures don't include the 30,000 Syrians, which are a totally special case, right? I mean, uh, these people are a special category and certainly need some sort of refuge, and we've agreed to take them in. But from the U.S., We've only had, we've had 7,500 immigrants last year. Now that compares to, what did I say, 50,000 from the Philippines. From France, we've had 5,800, and from the UK, 5,400. So basically, we're getting five times the number of immigrants from Asia as we are from our traditional sources of immigration. And I haven't seen any ministerial uh, visits to France or to Britain or to the United States talking to business groups, talking to professional groups, saying you'd be welcome in Canada. I mean, if they can do it in Asia, if they can do it in China, if they can do it in the Philippines, why shouldn't they be doing it in London? Why shouldn't they be doing it in Paris or in Berlin or in Copenhagen and saying, look, you could come to Canada. Our taxes are better. Our life standard is, is higher. Uh, the cost of goods are, are lower than anybody who's been to Europe could testify to that. The opportunities are better. We have a parliamentary democracy. We have a safe society. You could sell that in the States, uh, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, Canada is a really great place to be. Uh, and if we can sell it overseas in Asia, why aren't we selling it overseas uh, throughout uh, Europe? Well, I know, too, you want immigrants who have a skill set and we also want people to move to places where we need them. I know legally you can't tell somebody you can't live in Toronto or Vancouver, but how about you get extra points on your application if you're willing to live outside of Metro Vancouver and Toronto, say, for a minimum three years? I think there is something in that in the works. Now, I don't know whether they actually adopted it. There was some talk of that, and I would see nothing wrong with that, that people that... Uh, uh, agree to, uh, you know, depending on their pref profession, they have to be able to find work. But if they agree to serve somewhere or work somewhere else and uh, live somewhere else, uh, the problem you have with professional accreditation, you know, you have a doctor or you have an engineer, they have to be recredited usually or, you know, fixed up when they, when they come here to meet Canadian qualifications. And, uh, and, uh, I, I mean, I don't care what incentives Canada offers except I would say, I, the same incentives have to be offered to immigrants from everywhere. You can't say we have one set of criteria for those from the EU because we like you, because uh, you know, because you're you're white and you're Christian, and where we have a separate set for people coming from Asia because they're Buddhist or uh, or Muslim or whatever. You can't do that. You have to have the same set of criteria for everybody. But you know, when we talked, we started. We talked about race. I'm not saying. Uh, 
you know, you have to get, uh, you have to understand the new reality of Europe and the UK anyway. I'm not saying, oh, we have to go after white immigrants from UK. There are a lot of well-educated people in the UK from East Indian background, from black background, from Chinese background. Same thing throughout Europe. Europe is multicultural now. They're not all refugees, you know, that are there. There's a lot of people who are very well-educated and very well-skilled from every racial and ethnic, uh, ethnic group. So that welcome mat has to be out to all of those people. Not uh, We're not saying, well, we want European because traditionally they're white. No, I don't care about that. But we certainly Europeans, just by their nature, no matter what race, no matter what religion, no matter what ethnicity, they are closer to Canadians culturally than the people who come here from, uh, let's say, uh, from the East, who have much great, more, greater difficulty language-wise, cultural-wise, uh, in assimilating into our society. So I think uh, the UK, uh, Europe, uh, Western Europe especially, but uh, and the United States, uh, the way things are going in the States, I'll bet you that we could convince a lot of people that already have education and skills that we could use and would very easily fit into Canadian society and might speak English and French already. Uh, we, we, we could welcome them quite easily into Canada. We'll have more with Harvey Oberfeld right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Harvey Oberfeld. Harvey, a lot of people will ask the question, why do we need immigrants at all? Period. From anywhere. Well, I, like I say, immigration, I think, is good. First of all, uh, our demographic growth, you know, the population, the birth rate in Canada is not sufficient to maintain or to grow our society. People, uh, we don't have the large families anymore. Some, we have a lot more married couples that don't have any, uh, any, uh, uh, children at all. We have people who live singly. Uh, we basically need people to come in here to bolster our population, especially as the baby boomers now start to retire. Um, I mean, that's a lot of people who are going to be taken out of the workforce. And many of them, uh, especially if they're already in their own homes and they have some savings, they may actually leave the workforce earlier than 65 or 70 years old. So immigration is good. Plus, I'll tell you something. Immigrants come here, and you know what they said earlier? They don't just go and buy a home. That's what gets all the news. Oh, they're buying homes, a $7 million home. No, no, no. Most of them, they'll buy, they'll rent, they'll, they'll buy modest homes, they'll buy... Uh, you know, homes like the rest of us, but they also contribute to society because those homes have to be furnished. They, those people buy cars, those people buy furniture, those people spend money when they go out. They are good for the economy. And, and I'll tell you, they also give us a better selection of restaurants, <laughs> if I could say that. But it's, the immigrants are good for Canada no matter where they come from because they're consumers. And, uh, you know, and, uh, think of it, uh, think of the retail outlets, think of the, the, all the, all the places that we have here. If you, if you took away the immigrant, uh, uh customer base, a, a lot of them would, would be laying people off and shutting things down. So immigrants are actually good for us. And when they are working, they pay taxes, they contribute to the economy, they contribute to our country, I believe. Uh, so there's no reason not to bring immigrants in. Um, uh, as long as we do it at a rate, where we uh, we can absorb them, and I think Canada can absorb uh, quite a few. Our economy is doing pretty well, uh, and then we also have to be compassionate when people are refugees from true refugees, refugees from war torn places or disasters like Syria. Uh, I think we have an obligation to bring them in. Of course, you look at a person like Donald Trump who says ban all Muslims. Now that's an extreme move. Do you think he'll do it? And would Canada ever, ever, ever consider something like that? Well, you're presuming he gets elected. Yes, uh, but would I'm he? still, I'm still, to be honest, I'm praying that he doesn't for a whole variety of reasons. Um, uh, but I don't think even if he did get elected, you never know. He might start some rumblings. 
But I'll tell you something. If uh, he starts some rumblings against, let's say, China or, or, or the Arabs or Saudi Arabia, uh, all they have to do is start calling in a few banknotes and start putting up, uh, to, you know, uh, restrictions on American imports and all that. Uh, what Trump and these people don't seem to realize, I think I, I heard like 90% of the American economy involves exports. I mean, uh, you know, and that's not getting any play because the media are just going for sensation in the states, right? Any ridiculous statement gets played over and over and over again. And unfortunately, uh, Clinton and uh, Trump and uh, and Bill Clinton and everybody else, I mean, they, they just seem to be uh, enthusiastic about providing ridiculous things that they say that allows the mainstream media to concentrate on the gibberish and not get down to the issues about the economy and how the American economy has to grow specifically and how, what the benefits are of trade. I haven't seen anybody talking about the benefits of global trade to the states. About It's all about importing from China uh, and Bangladesh and that and Mexico. But what about the stuff that the United States exports? Nobody seems to be talking about that. So, uh, but you know the chaos that's taking place down there politically, it's, it's horrible. I talked to friends from the states, uh, right, well, just this morning, in fact, um, and, uh, it's just awful. And, uh, and, you, and what I've noticed is the, the, this is a really country that's really divided, and even the election won't solve that. Uh, the, this is a country that's hurting. This is a country that has really in, in, uh, amazing social problems, political problems, educational problems. And uh, and my my thing is that Canada should take advantage of that uh, by showing them that we have a better way and a better life and a better society. And if you fit our criteria, come on, uh, come on north. If Americans do move north, do you believe they'll bring their gun culture with them? No, I think you'll find the type of people who would be interested in coming to Canada are those who are trying to leave the gun culture behind. I don't think the uh, I mean, I've, I've met these people. I've, I mean, I've met some pretty redneck people. Uh, they wouldn't think of coming. I mean, they already know that America is the greatest place on earth. And, uh, and I have found from experience, don't try to talk them out of that by introducing facts or any kind of world surveys that show in several areas they're not. Those people are convinced America is the greatest place on earth, the greatest place to be. Uh, it's the best. There's nothing greater. Everybody in the world wants to be there. Uh, and uh, when you try to explain to them, that's not really the case, oh, they don't want to hear it. The people who would come here would be people who are, I would think, much closer to the Canadian way of looking at things, whether they're conservative or they're liberal. Um, you know, the people who would come north, who would show an interest in exploring and joining the Canadian society, would be, uh, I would think, much closer to our way of thinking uh, than the rednecks and certainly not the southerners and people like that. A real estate lawyer I just talked to in Seattle says he found Vancouver to be the most civilized city he's ever visited, not just in North America, but in the world, where we thank bus drivers for letting us off when you get off a transit bus. Yeah. I've never seen that anywhere else in the world. Well, we, uh, I, yeah, I've, some, I've seen it a little bit in Britain, and I know in France, if you ever go to France and you want to get along with people, even if it's just asking for directions, never walk up to them and say, where do I find this? They'll just look at you like you rude piece of, you know. What you have to do is you say bonjour. Everywhere you go, say bonjour first, even if you're talking to a, a street sweeper. Uh, you show people respect. Uh, and Canadians, uh, the one thing I noticed, and I've explained this to Americans when they ask me what's the difference, because as you know, I spend the winters in Florida uh, pretty well. And, uh, and they asked me what the biggest difference I noticed. And I just said, Canadians are a gentler people. Americans, even my friends, I mean, who are, you know, educated people, good people, they are so on edge. They are so, they're aggressive. Uh, there's something about them. There's a, there's an edginess to them that we don't have. And I see it as soon as I come back, like if I come back for a visit and I go to the Safeway store as, a, as opposed to shopping at Publix or Win dixie in Florida or something like that, or God forbid Walmart, because I do go there too. And the people there, they're, they're rude, they're pushing the line. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I come here and the very next day I go to Safeway to buy groceries. Everybody is gentler. The people in line are gentler. The cashiers are gentler. It's a whole different society here. And, uh, uh, and I think that's something that we should offer as an incentive for people to come here to come and join us, not come and change us, 
come and join us because this is a different country. And it's only when you travel abroad and then you see what life is like there and then you come back here, you realize how special this country is. Well, nobody goes on tour in Europe and pretends they're American. No, no. In fact, uh, I have a brother who lives in the United States and uh, we ha- and he's a Republican and he's a deep in the wool Republican. We have great long discussions um, and, uh, you know, raising decibels and all that at times. Uh, and he 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 uh, he loves America. He came from Montreal, hates Quebec because uh, he felt pushed out by the separatists. Uh, tries to uh, hates the socialists of Canada. He thinks uh, I think he thinks our conservatives are even socialist. Um, but anyway, uh, but when he travels abroad, he <laughs> wears a maple leaf, and I've given him grief about that. That he has no right. I should have it seized because uh, there is something about being a Canadian and traveling abroad in many places uh, that uh, you don't get when they think you're an American. And I've experienced that personally, very personally, when people have thought I was American, and then as soon as they find out I'm Canadian, how their attitude changes and their wel- their welcome changes. And I've personally experienced the same thing in England. Amazing. Harvey, I know you have a home in Florida. Is Storm Matthew, Hurricane Matthew, going to hit it? It's heading right towards my place as we're on the phone. So I'll have an interesting couple of days, uh, and we'll see what happens. I have my hurricane shutters are up there, and uh, but it's the roof you worry about. But uh, you know, just got my fingers crossed because from the, I keep watching the Florida weather on the internet, and uh, I'm right in the path right now. So, uh, but uh, well, we we'll just hope for the best, and then Har- test out your insurance afterwards. <laughs> Harvey, we'll keep our fingers and toes crossed. Okay, thank you. Harvey, thank you so much for chatting with us. You're welcome. My guest has been Harvey Oberfeld, retired television reporter who still stays very much engaged with the issues surrounding the international, national, and local community. Check out his blog, Keeping It Real, on his website, harveyoberfeld.ca. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. You can find us also on YouTube on Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.